Ted Argrave from Marketing for Hippies, recording this here in my porch. And uh, today's video is about cancellation policies. Uh, I was being interviewed by my colleague Brad Morris the other day, and he uh, had a question that one of his clients uh, was asking. It was a situation where she was a holistic practitioner of some kind, and a few people had canceled or been late or no-showed for uh, sessions, and, and uh, she they'd offered to pay and she said no 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 it's okay so kind of what to do in these situations the first thing that's got to be said is having a cancellation policy is important that we treat people um, how to treat us by the way we treat ourselves and you know every once in a while all of us are late all of us drop the ball and miss something and so you know I'm I'm often fine if it happens once but even then it's very good to have a clear policy that sounds something like if you no show or if you don't cancel if you cancel within 24 hours you still pay for the session and if you no show you certainly pay for the session that could be 48 hours 72 hours the most important thing is to check in based on how you know popular your services are um, just how do you feel like if somebody canceled within 24 hours honestly how would it feel you know, 72 hours. Some people say, genuinely 72 hours, that'd be fine, I'm okay. You know, I've got lots of other things I can do and fill my time with, so it's not a big deal. And other times it's more because you might be traveling somewhere, you know, you might have rented a room for something, you might have booked off that. <coughs> well, you certainly did, <coughs> excuse me, book off that time and you're not doing anything else during that time. So we just, if, if we don't have those policies, what happens is people start to take it for granted. You know, I, uh, Go to this, I get my uh, my beard trimmed these days. I used to get my hair cut, but now I keep growing my hair. But I get my beard trimmed at this place called Barber Ha in Edmonton. And a uh, fellow Mark Hayes, wonderful beard trimmer. And uh, there were a couple of times I was just, I was five minutes late, but it meant that they couldn't do the, the session. Because so I wasn't going to be able to fit. And, which is, you know, understandable and sometimes 10 minutes, 15 minutes late. Anyways, I... I missed a couple sessions, and both times, when I came in the next time, I said I should pay for that last session. And the woman, Linda, who owns it, said, you know, Tad, you're the only one that does this. Nobody else pays for the sessions they miss. And I, but I was like, but they should. They should pay, because it's not your fault that I missed it. You booked off that time. That time could have gone to somebody else who paid. And if we don't have the cancellation policy, there's no consequence to it for people. So. You know, if there's no negative consequence to doing something, why would you not do it? Uh, so it just becomes a thing of, oh, sorry, I couldn't make it again. Ah, sorry, I'm late again. There's no reason to be on time. There's no reason to show up. There's no reason not to go for the other more exciting thing that came up or to prioritize it. I remember I did a, a pay what you can weekend workshop. <coughs> the only time I did this, I did two of them. And I had to, it, it was an exciting idea for me that a day-long workshop, but I'll email you the video of the workshop because if you go to marketingforhippies.com slash intro, you can buy, it's like two, two and a half hours from a video uh, or a video of a workshop I did in Victoria years ago, plus uh, transcripts, an hour of a, from another workshop, etc. So it's basically the core content of my day-long workshop with all the exercises and breaks and lunch hour and everything taken out. And so I'll send that to you in advance. And then the whole day will just be Q and A, which is you know more exciting for me as a workshop leader instead of just saying the same thing over and over again. And so I was hosting it just here in my living room, just over in there, and I had ten people sign up for each day, pretty good. And then five people didn't come to the first one, and five people didn't come to the second one. And I'll just tell you, a fifty percent no show rate uh, for me is very rare. There's always people that no-show, maybe 10%, but 10%, not 50%. And so to me, <coughs> the clear difference was they'd already gotten the content, and so they didn't feel the need to come. And there were a few emails, one or two of them were good, you know, a real, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I know this is, you know, has consequences for you, me not attending, but, you know, you know car broke down or illness in the family. And a lot of them were pretty lame, just, ah, oh, sorry, we stayed up late and tired or this type of thing. And some just did did not let me know at all. And so I wrote a blog post about, I'll see if I can find it and put it in the comments here. Um, but my blog post basically was laying out the consequences to me of them not showing up. So one of them is, what if I designed the workshop for 10 people? 
And there's certain exercises that only work with about 10 people and don't work with five. So there's a consequence of you not showing up is I can't do a lot of the things. Second one is I wait for people. I don't just start. If there's 10 people coming, I'm going to wait. I won't just start with five. You know, if it's a matter of waiting five, 10, 15 minutes, I'll probably just wait a little bit with that smaller group rather than keep interrupting as people come in. So now I'm waiting. So the workshop's going to start later. Number three, I start the workshop bummed out because I thought there were 10 people and now there's five. I'm bringing these cancellation things, you know, an hour before. And it's just an emotional bummer for the facilitator. If you've ever led a workshop, you know, when people don't show, it's just, it's a, not a great way to start a workshop. Number four, I make less money. This is pay what you can. You didn't just pay for it all in advance. So I make less money. Number five, there are people who might have wanted to come to the workshop who couldn't come because the workshop was full. Or even if it's not full, if I'd known it was half price, I might have canceled it or I might have just hustled a lot harder to fill those last spots. Regardless, there's other people who could have come who would, and etc. And I emailed that to the people who no-showed just to say, just let's be clear. This isn't a neutral thing when you bail like this. Um, some of them responded well to that, some not. But there's some something about self-respect in all of this that if we let people walk over us, they will continue to. You know, there's there's something, I've written about this in other places, but there's this dynamic in humanity of, of the predator and the protector. And... You know, one is the protector is this very noble part of humanity and the predator is this very ignoble part of humanity. Um, they're both there. They probably, you know, they both have a function or a role. But the interesting thing is they don't exist. <coughs> um, oh yeah, I did a video about this. I'll see if I can find the link to that too. But they don't exist independently. They are both... Um, brought into existence by something and it's always the same something what is that something they're brought into existence by the presence of vulnerability and weakness and we've all we've all been on both sides of this we've all seen weakness in others and taken advantage of it you know it's very it's so common i wish you know i wish it weren't more but in this modern culture it's a very common thing um you know and we've all been on the receiving end of that having a some sort of vulnerability or weakness taken advantage of and you know, I won't list them but hopefully you, you know, get your own list in your mind or you get a memory of it but yeah we've been on both sides of this all of us and um, we've all been on the protector side we've all seen a weakness in others and protected it you know not taken advantage of it not um, tried to get away with something but um, <clears throat> stood up for them you know so in business and marketing this could be you see that somebody is really in desperate need for something you need the money badly but you see that it's not a fit, that what you're selling is not going to be as helpful as something else. And so the, pred the predator instinct would be to say, oh, yes, this is definitely going to help you sign up now and you get their money. The protector instinct would be, you know, uh, this isn't the best fit for you. There's actually somebody else I'd recommend you go see who I think could help you better. Or I don't even know who else, but I can't really help you. It's not going to be worth it for you, even though you need the money, you know, and even though they are saying yes. I'll sign up you protect them from their own vulnerability and um, it just seems to be a dynamic in humanity that when we see that somebody has loose boundaries or doesn't stand up for themselves it doesn't always bring out the best in other people you know I remember reading a, a piece about how they'd had some some criminals some people who were muggers in New York watch videos of people walking down the street and they were asked, who would you mug out of these people? And they would all agree, I'd mug that person, I wouldn't mug this person. It just had to do with how they walked, that if they were walking confidently, you know, <clears throat> with a certain rhythm, uh, they wouldn't touch them. But if they were walking hesitantly, you know, looking not confident, sort of an off rhythm canter or something about it that said they were scared, those were the people they would go for. And so in business, if we have this um, collapsed approach to it, where we just, you know, clients get away with whatever, you know, they don't show up, they miss sessions, they, oh, I'm sorry, I did get you the money, I might, I'll get you the money next week and it keeps not coming. If we do that, bad behavior accrues. In fact, until I'm dealing with a, got my, I took my computer and a different laptop of mine, um, which maybe have to get a new laptop. I took it in because it broke down, uh, and 
the impression I was given to be a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks passed, I said, oh no, that's just for the assessment. And anyways, it's been six and a half months, almost seven months now since I took it in. And at first, I, you know, I was traveling a lot and I bought a new laptop because even after two weeks, I just needed a laptop for my business. And so it wasn't a huge rush, but you know, I don't know if you ever have that happen where you suddenly realize how much time has passed and you look up one day and I was like, it's been four months that they've had my laptop. This is insane. So then I started following up a little more persistently and um, they kept, oh, we promised this date and then they kept extending it. And the truth is at a certain point earlier on, I should have just gone in and said, you know what, this isn't happening. I need my laptop back. Yeah, and I, f I finally hit the breaking point the other day where I was going to come in to d today at 2.30 to pick it up because they, even in the last week, they've broken three deadlines. But they promised to fix it for free, and so it's, well, you know, for free, okay. You know, it's, it saves me money and time if they do it. But I finally said, look, I, I leave. I go out of town for three weeks on Sunday. I'm getting my laptop back Saturday. Translation, you don't have permission to have it be on Saturday. If it's still broken, I'm picking it up. And they're probably going to get a pretty terrible review from me. I almost never do bad reviews online, but I will. Anyways, all this to say, my continually allowing that is part of what perpetuates it. If I'd just gone in and said, you know what, I'm just going to find somewhere else. And the truth is I didn't because it was easier for me not to. But it's part of perpetuating the bad behavior. <clears throat> so here's the punchline. Here's what it's all building to. Again, we train people. We teach people how to, to treat us. If we let them treat us poorly, some people will, you know, um, and some people won't, and God bless the ones who don't. But even uh, sometimes that's seasonal, depending on the season people are at in their life and, and how desperate or needy they are for help. So we train people to do this, but it's more important than that. We also train them how to take, treat other people, you know. If we allow bad treatment towards us from clients, and by the, I mean, that could be late, it could be no-shows, it could also be yelling at us, it could be cursing us out, it could be um, any kind of bad behavior you've had with clients. If we allow that continue, to continue, what it means is it probably will happen to other people too. It probably means it's not just happening to us, um, it, we're encouraging it, we're fostering it in the world beyond, beyond us. And... Um, People need to get that they matter. If you look at the etymology of that word matter, mother, meter, substance, you know, the letter M in Indo-European languages signifies a substance with limits. And people walk around feeling like they don't matter in the world. But part of this is nobody brings forth the consequences of their actions. Nobody says, what you are doing impacts me as a human being. You matter. You have substance. You, you uh, The way you move in the world doesn't... You're not a phantasm. You don't just phase through things, you, uh, you, you impact them, and you've impacted me with, with your actions. So it's a human-making thing. It's a gift. We rob other people when we hold back. This isn't punishment. You know, I'm no fan of punishment. Punishment isn't a consequence. Punishment is a strategy. For what? That's another video, but it's not punishment. It's just um, human-making when we let other people know honestly and candidly the impact that they have had on us and on other people and on the world, where we're willing to report that back to people, they become more human. And to the extent that we don't, they're less human. We sort of ghost them. Not meaning ghosting as in we leave, meaning we turn them into a ghost. Anyways, this was a long, deep video. It's just such an important piece in business. I hope it was useful. Thanks so much.